welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are featuring one Akim Bobola Yemesi, a woman whose passion for media and women led her to start her own movement, the African Women in Media. But how did it come about? Remember that time when I said I was wrapping up IQ for News and thinking what to do and I started reflecting? So this is the outcome of that reflection. <laughs> right. So there's this thing I do every year, around October, November, December, that's when I start planning for the next year. Nothing happens without a plan. Okay. So I was reflecting, and what I'm reflecting, I'm reflecting on all the successes, all the challenges, all the things that went wrong, all the things that went right, but then also researching what other people have been doing. Because the thing, one of the very important things to consider in our society is the importance of networking. You may not physically be able to go to conferences and everything, but you've got LinkedIn, <laughs> right? You've got so many other ways in which you can network. You've got Google so you can research and find out things that other people are doing. So I was doing a lot of that, finding out what else was going on in the world, what's the future, what are people talking about? And I went from being interested in gamification to being interested in X, Y, Z, to being interested in community engagement, right? Remember, my objective was to be useful and to have impact, okay? So I discovered, and then in that process, I was looking for mentors. I love the idea of having mentors. I think it's really good to be a mentee and to be a mentor, no matter what stage you are. Even if you're the president of Kenya, you know, you should always... <laughs> you should, just saying, you should, you should have, always aim to have to do, if you aspire to do better, then you should have a mentor that is ahead of you. If you're in a, a zone where you're, com in com where you're, if you're in a zone where you feel comfortable, where everybody's either at par or below you career-wise and stuff, then you're not, you're not helping yourself to reach out. I went somewhere the other day, I was with a group of amazing women and I felt so inadequate. I was like, yeah, this is where I need to be. So that you can see that other people are doing amazing things, not just you. So I started researching and I was looking for a mentor, I was looking for a network to kind of help me through that process. Um, and I was speaking to my mentors at that time, but you know, there was just, I needed to find people that shared my experience. Right? Being an African woman, being an African woman in diaspora, being a woman in our industry, being an entrepreneurial woman, you know, being a mom, a young mom then, you know, I was still struggling with the old, I, when I first had my baby, I didn't even know how to breastfeed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? So going through all of that life journey, I wanted somebody that could relate and I could relate with. And so I didn't find that, so I set up a Facebook group, a Facebook group called African Women in Media. Oh my God. That's how I started. Oh. Now, <laughs> not just that, but the fact that, remember, this is, it, it was a year before I arrived at that point. I'd researched, I'd looked at women programs, I'd looked at empowerment programs, I'd looked at what other people are doing in the US, in the UK. I did a lot of research. I had spreadsheets and research documents and all that kind of stuff. I was speaking with people. My brother, my immediate younger brother, Mackindogne, he's, they're always very honest with me. So are all my, spouse, my, all my um, siblings and my husband. But So I said to him, what did you think of IQ for News? Do you think I should restart it or do you think I should do something else? He said, look, Linda KG is making so much money. <laughs> Linda KG is making so much money. Just do gossip <laughs> because that's all people want. At the end of the day, nobody cares about your serious news. <laughs> That's what he said to me, you know, obviously I wasn't going to go into that line of business. Her research led her to her first website on women in entrepreneurship called hermd.com, which later was renamed Africa Women in Media, a Facebook page at first. It was a Facebook group to begin with. This is like early 2016. It was a Facebook group to begin with. It was just me and my sister on there. <laughs> it was just two of us on there for like months. I didn't really do much with it after that. And then, and then I got a call from CNN to say, oh, congratulations, you're a finalist for the CNN. And you know, I, I lost it. Like I literally screamed down the corridor. And then, <laughs> and then we went for the finalists. So what happens when you're a CNN finalist is that you get taken with all the other finalists to a city, a, um, wherever where they're hosting it that year. So that year was in Johannesburg. So it was like a three, I think we were there for f four or five days. So you have like a whole finalist program where you're meeting all sorts of people. It was an amazing experience. We had a media forum as well where we had 
the best of the best in media attend and we had lots of amazing people from South Africa attend. And one of the questions during that forum was, how are we supporting African women that work in the media? Where are all the African women in media? How are we networking? How are we collaborating? I kind of said, I've got a Facebook group called African Women in the Media. And now I feel so silly not doing anything about it. And so, before I even finished in South, in South Africa that year, I started adding people to the group. I started planning and I set myself a goal that by next year, I will be hosting a forum like that. Fast forward from 2016, three years down the line, her promise to hold events on a yearly basis materialized. She planned for a successful conference a year later in South Africa with only 55 people in attendance. The number tripled on the next event and who knows how much more she will have in the consequent events. She is really a boss lady. These events is not about me, it's not about our women, but it's about the people that attend. What I loved about the conference last year was the way every single per person took ownership. Yeah, Whatever bit they were playing, whatever role they were playing, whether they were the MC, whether they were the panelists, whether they were the chair, or they were just the, the person attending, whether they were the trainer, everybody took ownership of it. You know, And that is really important, to make sure that the event is about the people that are coming to your event and not about you or, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. My friend was like, why aren't you like, you know, there? And I was like, it's not about me. You want people to be there to network. You understand, to build themselves. And I often get asked also, what's been your successes so far? I've not won any awards. I'm not looking for awards. And that's usually the way they expect you to answer. But that's not how I look at um, success. And that's not how I would look at success. Success for me is when you tell me that you came to my event and as a result of coming to my event, you got a job or you got this new skill that led to this thing. So after my event, our MC got a job on radio in Lagos as a radio host. After the event, there was a PhD student that presented her work and she became a consultant on a film set because there was a film producer in the audience when she was presenting her paper. Right? After the conference, there were two ladies who set up their own conferences. Because the theme last year was visibility, and that was when we were doing the elections in Nigeria. So we're talking a lot about women in politics and lack of visibility for them. So these two ladies went to set up their own one-day event around how do we amplify the voices of female politicians during these elections. You know, and one of them was really surprised I was trying to help her. But you know, but you do your own events, why are you trying to help me? I was like, why wouldn't I try to help you? Well, it's not, who cares about competition is good, right? Without competition, you stand still, you know? So, you know, and so those kind of success stories, that's how I measure success. So if you ask me what's been the success of Awim so far, it's those people's stories and the impact that the events has had on them. I think when people see the genuinity in what you're trying to do, they're really happy to be a part of it. You know, I think that's the only answer I can give you. I think people just, if, if, if they see the potential in what you're trying to achieve, and they, these people want to have an impact as well, you know. So, and it's the opportunity to do that. I'm really pleased this year to be doing AWIM 19 in partnership with the African Union. And that has been, their support has been so far reaching. Um, I think the African Union is an organization that has so much potential. They have so many great plans for the continent. And, you know, um, and it's been a joy kind of working with them to develop this program. And I hopefully our relationship will continue because I really truly believe it truly believe in their agendas around gender, around kind of women's rights and all those things and youth. So they've got a lot of amazing plans for the continent and I think um, I'm happy to be working with them and to kind of contribute to that, you know, contribute to, to be a part of that change, right? To have that impact and to work with them on that. So it's amazing to have them as our partner for um, 2019. We're really lucky to have a couple of organizations who have sponsored people to attend. So we had Open Society um, Initiative East Africa who sponsored 28 East African journalists from all over East Africa to come to attend the conference. And we had Free Press Unlimited who sponsored journalists from all over Africa, even from Europe to attend. And then also Interrupt to Africa who also support journalists to come from East Africa as well. So we've been really lucky to have a lot of organizations ready to support us. And 
hopefully this is just the beginning. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint-hearted. Um, I learned a lot of things going through that process of setting up IQ for News. Um, and you've got to be willing to take some risk. And not everybody can take the level of risk you need to take as an entrepreneur, and that is okay, right? I teach my students on my course, Global Media Management, that entrepreneurship it doesn't necessarily mean you set up your own thing. It could mean that you take entrepreneurial roles or leadership within your organization, right? So that's called intra entrepreneurial skills, right? So being entrepreneurial within your organization, you don't have to set up your own company. Boss Lady Quote of the Day. Success is only meaningful and enjoyable if it feels like your own. This quote is by Michelle Obama.